What a great looking group of people. Thank you very much for participating in this third hack and thank you Fiona for making everything happen. We've, uh, I work at the Global Water Institute and to begin I'd like to also acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. They're just words that we use to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, but what they're doing is they're connecting us. And tonight is about making connections. Our Water Institute has close to 400 postgraduate and academic researchers and, and students. They come from the faculties of law, medicine, arts and social science, science, engineering and the built environment. And our, our ethos, our, our philosophy at the Water Institute, because they all do terrific work, whether it's in medicine, whether it's in engineering, but our, our ethos is to do collectively that which academics can't do individually. And this is a perfect, perfect hack to, that embodies that, those attributes. And also, again, while we acknowledge the traditional owners, what we do has to be connected. It has to be appropriate. It has to be culturally accepted. Um, if the Water Institute is about doing collectively that we, individuals can't do, we're also not about being, if you're a hammer, the world is a nail. So Fiona did a nice job reading out my CV and I would have put myself in the category of someone who's a hammer and the world is a nail. For me, it was all about membranes, desalting this, recycling that. What you learn, or what I've learned in working with, with academics from other faculties and people outside the university on these vexing problems, is there isn't one solution, and more importantly, one individual doesn't have all the, the information. Um, let's think about this problem that we've got. We've centred it in India, and I'm grateful to Rob Taylor, my colleague from um, the School of Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering, and, well, particularly because he believes in, in finding these integrated solutions, and also for inviting our four students from IIT Ropar. Where are they? There you are. Gentlemen, welcome. We share a lot in common. We both <coughs> lose in the semi-finals of the World Cup cricket. What a strong bond. Nothing, nothing better than having a common, something common. But again, I, I keep referring back to acknowledge country. What we do has to be culturally appropriate. What we has to do has to work in context. And we have to be open, okay? So it's really important that our friends are here from IIT Ropa because you understand the context. Understanding the context of the problem is the first step. So this is a really vexing issue, okay? The, the WHO, UN are telling us that more and more and more of us are leaving agricultural precincts and living in urban precincts. So we have a drift to the cities. And Delhi is an interesting city. It has a population that's about two million more than the population of Australia. And it sits in an area that would probably extend from where I'm uh, standing now to perhaps... Um, Mona Vale to the north and Cronulla to the south. 27 million people. Maybe if we drift west, we'd finish up at a little bit west of Parramatta. So smaller area, a lot of people. More people moving in. What pressures does that place on resources? Water. We know that the water tables in India particularly are being drawn down through over-extraction. A lot of that is being used to grow food, and that's important. So we need water to grow food, but we need nutrients, we need carbon, we need nitrogen, and most importantly, we need phosphorus. Phosphorus is a limiting resource, is a limited resource. Chemical engineers like me can make nitrogen from the atmosphere, but phosphorus exists and it needs to be recycled through the system. That's how we have it, that's how we mine it, and without it, Forget about growing food. So these, these nutrients are critical. But you also need energy. Okay? You need energy to control the environment. 
You need energy to move water around. You need energy to harvest. You need energy to bring the raw materials in. You need energy to move the, uh, the products out. And so by moving agriculture to the cities, we can begin to mitigate some of these demands or, or, or pressures on the demands and look at ways to recycle. The quality of the soil or the hydroponics is critical. That needs to be sustained. The waste that's generated and the symbiotic connections between waste. Um, how the food is packaged up and distributed. 90% of the plastics in our oceans originate from seven rivers around the world. So all of that goes into how food is presented, manufactured, used, uh, experience in an urban environment, but in this urban environment, it's in India. So it's got to work for India. It's got to work for Indian conditions. And so if I was looking at this as a blank sheet of paper, I would park anything I knew about membranes and water and all that stuff and recycling, because while those preconceived ideas might be appropriate in some contexts, like California, where I spent a good deal of my career, or in Singapore, where I worked after California, may not work in Delhi, may not work for the people in Delhi. So culture informs solutions. And I think that is why we run the hacks. Because while you'll be guided and you'll have access to experts who'll be able to give you their advice and what they've learned from, from other systems, the, the, the solution's got to grow organically. It's got to be place-centered, it's got to be human-centered. So Fiona's mentioned that it needs to be you'll be judged on whether it's viable, whether it's, it's technically feasible but economically viable, whether it's viable in a social context. So it's a real challenge. And working with students, and not all of you are students, some of you are postgrads, some of you are doing your PhDs, some of you are working, um, that's where the ideas come from. That's where the creati creativity comes from. And that's why we're delighted to work with, um, with the MCIC and we, we, really, we really support these these activities. Um, otherwise, you know, the, the Water Institute wouldn't get the ideas, wouldn't be exposed to the problems so that we can direct our members to work on problems collectively and, and make advances that they would never be able to do individually. So you guys are a really important part in what GWI is all about and I'm really grateful that you have given up your Friday nights and your weekend to be here. I'm grateful to MCIC. So uh, the only other thing is I hope you enjoy the next, what is it, 48 plus, about 52 hours. Um, and I look forward to seeing the results on Sunday. So with that, I'll hand over to, back to Fiona, but again, thanks very much. <laughs>